Welcome to episode three of the Blue Collar Coder Introduction to React series. I'm Jack Harrington, at Jaher on Twitter. So iterating over lists, it's something we need to do in almost any web application, and React is no different. So in this one, we're going to bring in a whole list of Pokemon and show you how to build a big table out of that. It's pretty fun. Let's go jump into the code. So the next thing we're going to do is bring in our Pokemon. So down in the description, there is a link to the Pokemon.json file, which is a GitHub gist. I'm going to open that up and then click on the raw button to get the raw file. In my browser, which has a JSON extension, it looks like this, but you know, it'll, it'll look fairly similar to this. And I'm just going to select all of that and create a new file called Pokemon.json and just paste it in. And I'll use a command in VS Code, format document, and that'll make it look nice. So let's scroll all the way up to the top of the file. And we can see that this is an array. It's a big array of objects. Each object is a Pokemon. It has an ID. Those IDs conveniently start with one. There is the name, which is specified in English, Japanese, Chinese, and French. There is the type, which is an array of the different types of a Pokemon. And then there is a structure called base, which has essentially the game mechanics of a Pokemon. So it's hit points, it's attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and, and speed. It's a nice piece of data to play around with. Now to get this into our app, it's actually pretty easy. We're just gonna import it. We're gonna say import Pokemon from Pokemon JSON. How's that? And now we've got this Pokemon array. So how do we go and format that into our HTML document? Well, the first thing you need to do is open up curly braces. And then we're going to say Pokemon.map. And what that's going to do is run the map method against that Pokemon array. And map takes a function. That function then takes two different parameters. In this case, it takes Pokemon and an index, but we'll just use the Pokemon. And you get to specify what the return is for every Pokemon. So in this case, we're going to open up parentheses again and grab that tr row and paste it into that map. And you see this all the time in React applications. And as soon as I hit save, you can see that now we've got a whole bunch of rows, all of which say exactly the same thing, Bulbasaur and Grass Poison. So now let's change out Bulbasaur for curly braces, Pokemon name English. And so going back to that Pokemon JSON file, we know that there is a name structure and within that is English. So Pokemon.name.english. Now over in the next row, we're going to say Pokemon.type. But it's an array. So how are we going to format it so that it looks good? Well, there is an array function called join. So let's use that. And then give it the string of a comma with a space after it. And that's going to give us a nice comma separated string with all of the values in that array. Let's save again. And wow, that's really nice. Look at that. Now you've got all the Pokemon and it's got their names. But let's go over and look at the inspector again. And we can see that in the console, we're getting some complaints. And what it's complaining about is the fact that we're iterating over something. We're creating a whole bunch of new tags, but we're not giving them a key value. And that key value is really important to React because it's how it manages all of the tags that are created as you iterate over a list. It wants to be able to efficiently identify that this particular HTML element is bound to this particular piece of data so that should that data not change, it won't go and update the cell, which is really nice for performance reasons. So we're going to add in key, and then we need to give it something unique. So in this case, we already have something, which is the ID. So we'll just put in Pokemon ID. And that's perfectly fine and valid. But if you don't have something like that, let's just say that, you know, we did, an ID didn't exist. What you can do is you can go and join a couple of values together. So for example, we could use the ID 
and the name in English and use that join method to join them with a semicolon or a colon. And that would give you a unique ID. So you can synthesize your own unique IDs. The important part here is that the key needs to be unique amongst all its siblings. It doesn't have to be unique for the whole page, it just needs to be unique amongst all its siblings. So we'll just use Pokemon.ID since it's exactly that. And we'll go back into the console. And voila, it works. But that's a really long list. There's a lot of Pokemon, as it turns out. So you can also use other array methods, like in this case, dot slice, to pare that down. So I'm going to say that we only want the first 20. So we'll start with index 0 and slice off 20 items, and then we'll map those. And the nice thing here is that since dot slice returns an array, we can just kind of stack these things up. So Pokemon dot slice dot map. And you see that a lot. All right, well, I hope you've got your Pokemon all listed out. In the meantime, of course, hit up the newsletter link in the description, click on that and sign up for the newsletter. You'll get access to these videos a day earlier than everyone else, which is totally cool, as well as JavaScript tips and tricks, links to cool articles. It's really great and you can't beat the price, which is free. In the meantime, of course, like and share these videos with everybody else, spread the love, and subscribe if you are so inclined. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.